Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I've got a little different video for you guys today. Uh, I got a new tool in the shop, so we're going to unbox it and review it. It's something I've wanted for quite a while, and I'm really glad to have it. Uh, this is also my first video under my new lights, which is also something for me to be excited about. So let's go over to the bench. I'll show you this tool, and we'll review it. All right. Now, some of you guys will remember a few videos back uh, on the building a prototype video. I was using this crummy drill press vise on the milling machine on the rotary table to scrub my lines for my indexing angle plate, or for the fidgical, or the pointer. And, you know, I really wasn't happy with it. To get repeatable results with something like this is, you know, almost impossible to be honest and uh, it really made the job you know kinda I don't know it wasn't it definitely wasn't an ideal setup so I was contacted right before that video uh, by a company that said hey you know pick anything you want from what we sell uh, it was banggood.com they said pick whatever you want from anything we sell, and they sell, you know, of course, an array of anything, mostly not machining items, but whatever. I'm not affiliated with these guys whatsoever, but they were nice enough to say, hey, pick something you want, we'll send it to you free, whether you, you know, review it, whether you like it or not, you know, doesn't really make any difference. So that's pretty good, no strings attached, you know. Uh, Miss Emma uh, from uh, Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop did the similar thing with the, the uh, precision angles and she ran into the same situation that I ran into with the precision angles and that they weren't very precision. So, you know, I had nothing to lose on this. So, I chose a precision toolmaker's vice. Precision, you know. So we're going to unbox it together. We're going to see, you know. I. I have no idea. I have not had this thing out of the box. I have not, you know, checked it in any way. So, let's unbox this thing, look at it, and see, you know, if it really is precision. You know, my first look is that the box is pretty crappy, really. It was already, you know, the tape was broke on it, and it's pretty uh, beat up. And this was in uh, just a soft envelope, you know, a bubble wrap envelope. So, Packing's not real great, you know, but for the price, I guess, you know, they got to cut corners somewhere. So, you know, my... And you got your Allen wrench. And just a first look is that... Just buy can't set this on the stone all oily like this is that it looks the finish looks really good I don't know if you can see that but I am really happy with the finish so far yeah. you know not not feeling any you know sharp corners uh, you know, the overall bottom looks really good. Let me check this camera. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at that. Not too bad so far. You know, I'm really, uh, really happy to get something like this. Uh, you know, these are, uh, these are really nice to have, you know, as long as they're good. That's the thing. Uh, Set it on the stone and see what it feels like. It actually feels pretty good. You know, it's uh, off balance, so it's kind of hard to tell about its pivoting, um, you know, whether it's flat or not. But, 
but uh, I know what a pretty good flat surface feels like on a stone. And, uh, you know, without bluing this thing, you know, it, it it feels actually pretty good. I've got, uh, you know, my uh, surface gauge here. And let's just run it real quick over this top jaw. Let me bring you in and get you a little better angle. Alright. My first impression is pretty good so far, just visually. You know, that, that's not saying much. But uh, the finish is good. And uh, I'm not feeling any burrs. It feels well, you know, well finished. Uh, all the corners are broke. Um, and it really feels pretty good on the stone. There is a couple little spots on it. Looks like a little, you know, a burr from a die grinder or something. You know, got a little, but it's nothing. You know, just a little, little imperfection on the, on the finish. Let's take this jaw off because we don't need it on here. Well, now there is a little problem. You probably can't see it on camera, but the threads are damaged on this bolt. Let's wipe the oil off on it and roll it on this stone and see if it's bent. Now this could have been from shipping. Or you know, who knows. But it looks bent to me. Just the screw. That's not that big a deal, but it's, I mean, it's something, you know, who wants to, you know, that's loose. I don't know a lot about these, but it looks like it has a set screw here to hold its center. And uh, that set screw is not set, and that may be on purpose. But it was packed in oil, which is good. So I'm going to roll this. Yeah, I can tell you right now, it's the screw is bent. And that is... That light's not great. There, that's better. You see that? Not a big deal, but definitely an issue. So, issue one. I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me, though. I wouldn't, I mean, even, even if it, you know, even if I bought it, I wouldn't you know, worry too much over that. And look at that. The finish looks really good. It's got a little retainer, I guess, for the uh, little for the bolt in the bottom, the sliding nut that locks in, in the little ridges. The bed. I mean, it, I mean that is a good finish. It really doesn't get much better finish than that, to be honest. Some... So let's uh, let's check the bed for see if it's parallel. This is a tense indicator. Can you see that? You better indication, better the indicator. All right, we're just going to slide this vise underneath this, uh, and that is on this side anyway. I'm getting no movement.
side to side. I mean, that's as good as you can expect anything to be. Um, so, as far as the bed being parallel to the to the foot, it is. I mean, I'm getting nothing on this tense indicator. And that is good. All right, let's check and see if the uh, this top surface is ground parallel. Can you see that? Yeah, well, kind of. Better angle here. Man, it's nothing. Let's see front to back. Basically nothing. So that's good. I mean, I'm really surprised. Actually, really surprised so far. I was not expecting this. All right, I'm going to get you, pull you back a little bit, and we're going to stand this vice up and check this. Uh, uh, fixed jaw to this uh, front here. Let's stand it up. Wipe this off again. Now I am not a professional, you know, at this, but I got a decent idea of what I'm doing. And just feeling it to see what it feels like. It feels pretty good. Uh, pushing it down a little bit and rubbing on the stone. Because it almost feels like it's got a little something. And it does. There is a little speck right here where it is got a bur it's probably from shipping it probably got uh, dinged a little let me grab a uh, a translucent stone here and then I'm just going to dress that corner That feels good. Wipe this fixture off. Let's bring this in. Check it. Alright. Okay, and that's pretty good. I can't complain about that. We've checked our ways, and I can't get any discernible deflection on the tenths indicator. Um, you know, on the whole length here, and this is what five inches or so. Yeah, five and a half inches from the fixed jaw to the back of the bed. So I'm really happy with that, and to be honest, I'm extremely surprised. Uh, I was not expecting this, and uh, I was expecting, you know, a couple tenths, and uh, I would have been happy with a tenth even. But anytime you get, or me personally, uh, get under a tenth. Uh, 
deflection on the indicator. It's hard to judge whether, you know, it's not uh, the operator or, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the slight uh, dirt or anything. So I'm really happy that, uh, that the ways here are parallel with the foot. I'm also happy that the top of the vise here is parallel with the foot. I get no deflection here, no deflection here. I'm happy that this face here is parallel with the fixed jaw. I'm really getting no deflection there. So I'm really surprised, uh, to be honest. Um, and, you know, so let's just uh, move forward. I mean, I need to check the sides here. I want to check these ground surfaces here, even though these are not necessarily a critical surface on this vise because nothing rides on those. You know, it's uh, the fixed jaw rides uh, up here. So we need to check the sides, and then I need to try to check for square uh, between the jaw and the face. Now that's going to be tough for me. I do not have a great way to check square. Um, I can uh, do some comparison, and I'll try to set up my in uh, my surface gauge here, uh, that way I can check square by comparing it off of a, a V-block that I have. And I'm going to try to use Tom Lipton's method, which is, you know, just comparing the two, splitting the difference um, with the indicator here. But I don't have a great setup. This is the only, um, you know, surface gauge that I have, and it's a really, really big chunk. I mean, it's... Two inches tall, three inches long, plus three inches, 3.25 basically, somewhere right around in there. So it's really big and getting up on this surface and, and getting a real good measurement is going to be tough to check this square. I need to get me a really nice granite square, uh, something that I can trust, and uh, that's on the list to get. But I think that we can safely, you know, make a pretty good guesstimate on square, and that's what it'll be for me as a guess, kind of, you know, uh, an educated guess, but a guess, without some true measuring equipment to measure square. But I can measure things to see if they're parallel, and from what I've seen so far, I'm pretty happy. So let's check, let's see, we've checked these, we've checked this, we've checked this. Let's check these and see how they stack up. So I'm going to start down here. Try to get a zero on there. Okay, we'll call that zero. And I'm just going to slide this vice under here. And we'll get some movement here. Okay, you know, almost plus two. So, what, one eight five? One point eight five thousandths? That's surprising, really. But, uh, no, let's see. We're a tenth, a little more than a tenth below zero there. Check it again. Yeah, but let's just say two thousandths. Two thousandths high on this end, high on the high on the fixed jaw side. So let's let's see. Uh, turn this guy around. There you go. Now you can see that better. Zero. Close to zero, that's plus a tenth. Wow. Now we're getting basically, yeah, see, we're getting the opposite here. The exact opposite. So we're low. We're low on this end, two thousandths to down here. And we're high on this end. I'm assuming that this was put in a jig. They ground it, and then it was reversed, and then they ground this side in this jig, whatever it was, and it gave a mirror 
you know, or a reverse image uh, this side onto this side. That's just uh, an assumption, but uh, but yeah. So we're off two thousands on each side and opposite of each other. So there should be what four thousands difference in between um, this end and this end. Yeah, I think. Let's see. So let's zero here. Okay, zero. Yeah, I was right, basically. So, I think that that's what happened, is just their grinding fixture, where this is not a critical surface, it wasn't um, as tightly uh, controlled as the rest of it. So, let's check this surface and this surface and see if they are parallel with each other. All right, let's come in here and zero. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that zero. Move across. Let's get it where I can see too. How about that? Okay, zero. Move the vice. Wow, it's like nothing. I'm getting nothing. I'm impressed, I must say, I am to get nothing, not even a jiggle. Okay, wow, that's good. Now let's check, let's get you down and check the sides. Bring our indicator down. Let's feel this. All right. See it's pivoting out here. And of course, we've got a lot of mass out here. It almost feels like it's got a burr. I'm going to push down on it just a little and move it back and forth on the plate. Make sure the plate's clean. And we can get any dirt trapped up and under it. Let's try it again. Just, uh, I'm doing just basically the weight of my hand, trying to press as evenly as I can. Let's look at this and see if we see any shiny spots. A lot of light reflection there, but okay. We do have a little shiny spot here on this edge of this jaw, like it's got a slight burr on it. So, take my Hellenius or my Arkansas. This is just a translucent Arkansas, like I used before, uh, just a little longer, and I'm going to run over the surface. I don't feel it really, but I see it. Just lightly. Okay, that feels good. Make sure we don't have anything on the stone. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, we'll have to do this side too, the same way, just to make sure we get a good reading. Alright, let's get this where you can see it. Let's get this in, zero. 
Zero. Alright, now we do have a little reading there. That is about a quarter of a tenth. Actually, hold on, let's try that again, make sure we're correct. Anytime you get below a tenth, it's just hard to, I don't think anybody will tell you that. Hard to judge. Let's move. Okay, we're a little, just uh, not even half of a tenth. Low. Okay. Let's try that and see if we can repeat it. I had half a tenth low towards the fixed jaw. Okay, I'm confident that that's zero. Let's bring in. You can see it. Okay, we're zero. And we're moving. showing yeah that half a tenth it, it acts like it's got ever so slightly a belly in it just uh, but nothing really to be honest let's go in and let you see what I'm seeing all right now I'm starting back at the end here I'm trying to just jostle the the indicator. Okay, moving across, and there is halfway across. So it's uh, depending on your, you know, the way you're looking at the indicator. From here, it's about half of a tenth. Okay. And now we're all the way to the very edge of the fixed jaw side. And we've got um, about a quarter of a tenth. So we got a slight belly there, which is no big deal. Not enough to, to make any fuss about. In fact, I'd be more than pleased if I could operate a grinder good enough to get those results. Alright, let's get you back a little. Let me get you a better angle here. Okay, now let's check it from, you know, side to side. Actually, this is from top to bottom, but from bottom to top. Zero here, might as well. Wiggle our indicator a bit. Take the Yeah, I'd call it zero. Falling off the A little ledge there and back up on. And that's good. Nothing. <laughs> I must say that I am extremely surprised. Now let me try to get set up and see if I can determine some square here. Let me try to get my stuff set up and see if I can do it. But uh, to be honest, from what I've seen so far and just checking, you know, now I don't necessarily trust this. I would not, you know, um, you know, use this as fact. But if I set it up against here, it's on the money. You know, you can't see any light anywhere but that's just visual we need something better than that all right now i have set up my surface gauge now and i've set it up like tom lipton did uh, in one of his videos where he showed how to determine square without an actual you know reference 
Uh, I do not own a good square reference, um, and this is the method I'm going to use to determine, at least within you know a reasonable amount, whether the jaw on that vise is square to the ways of that vise. And what I have here is just a standard, you know, one, two, three block. Well, if I don't beat it around too much. And I have checked this one, two, three block to make sure that this surface here and this surface here are parallel with each other. And they are. Um, I can sweep across this with this tense indicator and I get no discernible difference, you know, or no variation, you know, uh, uh, all the way across in both uh, uh, directions. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But I do not know that this block, you know, when I set this block up like this, that this surface is 90 degree to the plate. It could be slightly canted in one direction or the other. But I can determine with this indicator whether it's canted or not by checking each side. And let me show you. Now this is kind of hard to do on camera and it's just, uh, you know, really touchy. We've got our tense indicator set up to where we can bump up against here and roll this block across. And we get just about a tenth positive on this side. And that's about two tenths. Two tenths positive. Now let's check this one. Two tenths positive. Yeah. So, because there is no variation in this side and this side, that tells me that this block is square, or at least square, you know, between the distance here, between these two points on this. Uh... Now, this setup took me a little while to get dialed in. It's not really easy to do and you can easily mess up or get a false reading by pressing too hard against it but just a slight bump and you're off so this is not a great great method but it will tell you you know within within a tenth or so if you're square you know it just depends on the the distance that you're measuring but uh, this is the best method that I can come up with to determine you know whether whether that jaw is going to be square or not because I don't have a good square reference. So let's pull this up here and if I can do this without bumping this around. So right now this is set. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I've done with the with the V block or with the uh, with the 1 2 3 block. Now if I would have got a different reading Let's say I had plus a tenth here and zero here on this side. When I sweep it, when I sweep it, I get plus one tenth. Turn it around, sweep it, and now I get zero. Well, square will be in between those two points, so it'd be let's say half of a tenth. Plus a half of a tenth would be considered square because that would be splitting the difference or the offset that these two are two are off to each other. But this block happens to be square, or at least I get, you know, extremely close, within a half a tenth. And, and once I get there, I mean, it's it's so close to where, you know, just your pressure of your, uh, you know, measuring, you know, as far as I'm concerned anyway, uh, can you can be off that much. So that's all this is going to tell us. You know, if I could send this to Stan you know, and he could run it on his square master, that would be nice, but there's not much distance here. What is this jaw? Inch and a half tall, so there's not much room here, and it's, you know, hidden because of this uh, shelf. It'd be hard to measure anyway. So I'm going to sweep this guy. I just bumped it. Hopefully that didn't throw it off. So I'm going to sweep it. There's a lot of stiction here. It's hard to do. Yeah, there we go. Let's try it again. Man, that's it's tough. Man, it 
touched. I think I bumped it. It's really hard, hard to tell. This thing wants to stick and it's hard to move and, and any variation in your pressure uh, will show on the needle. I mean, because this rod will flex slightly and uh, like I said, it's a tough method, but this is the best I can do to determine square. Yeah. It's within a tenth anyway. Yeah. So that is how I determine whether this jaw is fairly square or not, and it looks to be extremely square, at least within within a tenth or half a tenth, as best as I can measure using you know Tom Lipton's method, uh, and it's all you know operator dependent. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to check this back surface. Now, I've already determined that this surface here and this jaw are parallel with each other because I set this up on the vise and uh, swept across here, both uh, forward and across. But I want to check it anyway just for fun. Um, and I'm going to double check my setup here just to make sure I'm still correct. So we get plus a tenth. Plus a tenth. So. Okay, so let's try this. Now both of these are. This is a really heavy, um, you know, surface gauge, so it's kind of hard to 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 move it accurately. Plus now this is a different weight than that, so I'm going to be applying a little different pressure. So you really got to be careful with this with this test. You can easily get a false reading. Plus a tenth. Yeah. So, this surface is square with a plate. This surface is square with a plate. This surface is parallel with a plate. And we know that the foot is. So, I'm happy with that. We know that these two surfaces are parallel with each other because we laid it on its side and swept both across and lengthwise. I mean, what else do you check on it? You know, I think that's pretty good. You know, the movable jaw is somewhat... Uh, um, you know, we can check the fit. And I tell you, if you barely even put it on there, a little crooked, it gets stuck. So the fit, side to side, like if I try to wiggle it. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it is not much. I mean, just enough for it to move. That's really all it has. It feels good when I slide it. And it also closes really well. If I had some, you know, thin cigarette paper, I would, you know, slide it in between there. But it's not necessary because I can't see any gap there at all. You could see the gap of cigarette paper, and I can feel that this jaw closes good. Other than this bolt being bent, and that set screw being loose, which is not a big deal. I mean, this looks pretty good. Hmm, that, that's a real razor sharp edge right there. But nothing, you know, I mean, you can complain about, you know, the minor things, but not bad. Not bad at all. If I had to, I guess another good uh, test would be to uh, check these, uh, check these uh, grinding Vs to make sure that they are, you know, 
square with each other or uh, you know that would be a good test I guess alright so we're going to check these ground V's and the movable jaw here and the best I have to check it with is just a carbide you know piece of a carbide end mill and I don't have any gauge pins so I'm not going to you know claim that this is a uh, exact you know test but we're going to do the best we can to get you know uh, as accurate as results as possible I'm going to put this out an inch and just snug it down and I want to see if this pin it should be you know as long as this end mill is true uh, it should be parallel with the plate if that V is ground you know proper it should be so let's come in here and check it and see In here and zero out here under highest point okay I'm pretty happy that that's well I'm well not these are touchy indicators okay I'm happy that that is zero now let's come in here really close to the jaw. Well, that's five tenths. That's half a thousandth of an inch. So, not that great. Let's rotate this pin and see if we get uh, similar results. Let's try to snug it about the same. It's moving around on me, and it could just be that this movable jaw is not, you know, it's not a fixed jaw, so it, it's got a little slop, you know, it has to have in order to, to operate, really. And let's try this again. above zero and yeah, four tenths wow so this pen is actually you know sloped four tenths over about an inch so that's not good but it is what it is so I'd have to say I'm not that pleased with that but I'm not necessarily surprised either okay now it should be, you know, given that this fixed jaw is parallel, because we checked that with the plate, it should be parallel, you know, when you put the pin in here, because it should be pressing up against that fixed jaw. So we're just going to check the side here. See if it is ground straight. Gonna snug this down and we'll lay the vise down on this. We want to see to make sure that that's not tilted. So we'll bring our indicator in. Okay, about a needle width under zero. And about eh, two tenths. So that's not too bad. Yeah, let's uh, loosen and try again. And chances are our 
given that this uh, movable jaw is movable, uh, it may vary. Just a needle width under zero. And yeah, same, same reading. So this is slightly tilted that way. So let's check this and make sure that it's actually in the center of the vise. And we can do that with our big brown and sharp. So we'll just stick this in here. Snug it down. So we want to lay this on its side. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, kinda. There we go. Now I'm just gonna move this uh, vise under the. Okay, under the thing here, and we'll find our highest point and zero it. Looks like zero to me. Now let's flip it. Check it. Oh wow. Was it thirty thousandths? Let's just say thirty thousandths. That's surprising. That's what is that? That's fifteen thousandths off actual center, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's correct. So yeah. Wow, that's that's disappointing, but uh, you know it is what it is, I guess. But hmm, all right. I mean, you know, I think that's about as accurate as we can test with the equipment that we have. We don't have uh, a, you know a precision pin really, an end mill. Everybody knows about how accurate they are, and they're not too bad. So there we go. Well, guys. I think that's about it. I think we've, uh, you know, went over this thing pretty good. Uh, I don't know if we covered everything, but for the most part, we looked at it pretty good, and I feel like that I know this vise pretty well now. I'm a little disappointed that the grinding on the V's, on the movable jaw, is not a little more accurate than they are, but, uh, you know, if you know how inaccurate they are, you can account for that, but still, you know, not a very good thing. I'm really surprised at how parallel everything is. The sides, the bed, you know, the uh, fixed jaw. So, you know, overall I'm happy with it. I think it's a decent vice, but, you know, given the, the reputation of some of this overseas stuff, you know, you never know exactly what you're going to get. You know, the quality control, at least in my opinion, has been uh, lacking, you know, and you could order another one of these and get something that's totally different. So. You know, that's the, that's the bad, but uh, I definitely don't claim to be Tom Lipton. You know, that guy's really good. He's got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of good metrology equipment, and, uh, you know, the main thing is years of experience, which I don't have, so we did our best. I think we've done pretty good. You know, I'm pretty happy with it, so I think that about does it. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.